All right, let's get it then, Cesar. Salud. Ah, salud, cita. All right, folks. Well, welcome back to episode 110 of Goal Sighted. Shot from the beautiful Cupertino, California, at El Cuñado's house. Cuñi, shout out Cuñis. Gracias for, for letting us uh, record here today. We kind of didn't ask for permission. We asked but, for forgiveness at um, the end of it. I was just like, hey, we're here and we're going we're gonna to record it. And he was like, all right. Shout out Damien. Shout out Damien. Thank you for the drinks, Tommy and Damien. A huevo. Uh, but uh, thank you guys for tuning in, folks. We have another jam-packed agenda for you guys. A whole bunch of Euros going on. So we're going to go over some of the call-outs we're a bit early on to start thinking like, oh, okay, it's like el otro who moves on. Uh, but there's a whole bunch of drama going on, a whole bunch of good matches, some shitty matches. We'll talk about them, about the performances of some of the top teams. We'll bring that right into the top news. Um, some drama out of Liga Mekis, a couple of notes that I got there. Um, and a whole bunch of stuff to come. We have Copa America starting this week, folks. So maybe the first shout out that I'll give for that. Um, we've been doing live streams with uh, the boys over at Goals TV. We did today a live stream. We hosted it for, uh, who was it? Germany versus Ken, Hungary. Hungary. Yeah. Um, and that was amazing. It was electric, really fun. Had a good amount of people on there. Uh, we're going to have our next one on Wednesday. We're going to host the the stream for the Mexico versus Venezuela game. That's going to be a good game, también. It's going to be good. It's going to be all on the line for Mexico. Uh, and we'll be live on Goals TV's uh, YouTube channel. So check that out, folks. Oh, yeah, folks, but and just another, a couple other shout-outs before we get going. Um, we do want to shout-out our merch, folks. We got the hat right here, uh, but we're completely live with all of our merch. Our website, goalsided.com slash merch. We are just doing a one-month run, so uh, get them while they're hot because they're going to be gone in about a week, a week and a half. Yeah, and shout-out to the ones who've already purchased and helped out the pod with your purchases. Uh, your order should be coming shortly. There's tracking. There's everything. Any question you guys have? Let us know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean. But yeah, we're getting we're getting some good product. I just got an order in for hats. I just got an order in for the glassware. Really quality stuff. Uh, we've had a couple people send in pictures. So if you have ordered something, also send us a picture of you with it on or or, or wherever you have it. Si es adorno también. Send us a picture um, and we'll post it on our socials because like you guys are really supporting the podcast. Yeah. Hell yeah. Thank you guys for that. Um, the funds are going to be going towards all of the events that we have planned one event that we have planned this week, we're actually not spending any money on it, but it's a meetup that we're having for folks. Uh, for this Thursday, the kickoff match for the Copa America is Argentina versus Canada, 5 p.m. We're going to be hanging out at uh, Chivas Five Spot Grill, Chivas-themed restaurant slash bar in downtown San Jose. Homies of the pod, un saludazo para ellos. Uh, we're going to go out there and support them. Uh, all the proceeds are going to go towards them. They're a small business in the area. Really popping. Great quesavirria. Hey. Great micheladas. Great chelas. They're going to have appetizers <laughs> on uh, like deals. They're going to have beers, like $4 beers. Hey, let's go. A ver peda. A ver peda segura. And hopefully it'll be a good game. And this is just one event that we have planned um, this summer. We're Like we said, we're going to have live streams. We're going to have tailgates. We're going to have uh, meetups for other Copa America or Euros uh, matches. So stay tuned to our socials. You don't want to miss these. And also join the Discord because we'll be chopping it up in there. Um, talking about everything footy. Este verano de fútbol. Uh, we'll see you guys at Five Spot. We have a party full in the Discord and on social media. Uh, go check it out in RSVP so we know the heads that are going to come out. Um, so we can go out and support some local business. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So let's get right started with this. Cesar, we'll start off with uh, what's what's in the now, the Euros. Um, I wanted to go over a bit of a recap of some of the matches, maybe just some of the ones that stood out to us because um, for good or for bad, some of the some of the matches I think have been called out as pretty weak. Yeah. Uh, some of the matches uh, that weren't really expected to be very strong, like a Georgia-Turkey was a very good match. I think that Portugal versus uh, Czech Chechia, Republic, Chechia was a good match. Um, but uh, I think one that was very uh, lopsided that maybe we could start with was Spain versus Croatia. That one was wild. Yes. That was probably the, the match that I was looking forward to the most in this first round. And after the match, I was like, that's not what I expected at all. Spain um, went out strong and they went up 3 0. Yeah, Cicelo, I don't, got on easy. Yeah, in the first half, they were up 3 0. 
no reminiscences of the Croatia we saw at the World Cup. Mm-hmm. Modric was was on the bench, like asking himself, like, what's going on? How are we down three zero? How's this happening? Um, but that Spanish team is to be reckoned with. They have uh, Lamina Mala has been killing defenders left and right. Carvajal, Dude, who sure. scored, is coming off of a great season with Real Madrid. Another and continues. Another and, like Balón Parado go right, like they, or like they, a cross in. The oh. era tiro de esquina. Yeah, it wasn't header though, right? He used his foot. Something like, I yeah. remember it was being tiro de esquina, and who else but Carvajal? And the shortest, it. probably the shortest guy on the field again. Yeah, Morata scoring for for Spain. Sometimes uh, being called out as like uh, like a meme for not scoring the easiest of chances. But I mean, lately he has been scoring for Spain, and he scored in the Euros to give him the lead. Yeah, uh, Yamal has been torching people. Uh, he had Guardiola on his side, and low key it looked kind of easy, which yeah. is kind of wild. Like I would have thought it'd be one of the the easier Croatian players, but to have a, a Guardiola who we know is the quality of City there, that's that was kind of wild. Uh, but yeah, it looked too easy for this Spain. Um, Fabian Ruiz with the goal and an assist. Pedri had an assist. Um, they looked really solid in another match for Rodri without a without a defeat. That's going cool. back and like a clean sheet. Going back like a, over, over a year and a half now at this point, it's still rolling. But I say the equipo de Colombia, Luis. Ay, sí. Sheesh. No, but yeah, Rodri. I mean, you have Rodri on the field. It's a guaranteed victory at this point. Um, but really good first game for Spain. Really bad first game for Croatia. So, like, the big question is, do we take this with the grain of salt? Is Spain that good? Are they going to just smack everybody? Is Croatia doomed? Are they out of this group? Okay, so after today's match, Croatia tied against Albania. They have one game left, one point. Uh, if Italy wins their next match versus Spain somehow, they're out basically, right? Yeah. At that point. Do you think Croatia stands a chance, or do you do you think uh, Spain and Italy move on at this point? I think uh, it's going to come down to that last game, right? I think Spain is going to beat Italy. I don't think Italy... They can, but I see it highly unlikely that they beat Spain. A Spanish team with Rodri that we just alluded that he's been tearing it up. Uh, I don't think they have enough to to beat that Spain. So I think Italy and Croatia battle it out in that third match. Y el que gane ahí, pues, se Se lleva. It continues on to the next round. And uh, one thing to call out, we do have uh, best third places moving on here. So Aguas con Croatia, if they find out a way to sneak into that spot. And if they are able to uh, get into a knockout round, right? They think that's where they get stronger. Um, I think they're just having a rough go this group stage. To not be Albania is pretty wild. I know. and But, I mean, to be fair to Albania, they also give the run for their money to, to, to Italy. They went up early on to a mistake by Di Marco, I think it was. Uh, so, Albania is a force to reckon with. I mean, no son easy papita, easy pickings. So, yeah. Italy is going to... Uh, Spain is going to have to battle it out in that last game against Albania, which they should win. But if Albania can crawl and get a tie, like, and and Croatia can lose this, maybe Albania can sneak in there as well. But with two points? At that point, they would have a tie, yeah, so yeah, it would be two right. points. They, That'd be really rough. They'd need to win. They would need to win uh, just to get a better, to be able to qualify as one of the best third places because some of the other groups would probably have third places with three, four points, right? Yeah. Uh, but... I mean, Croatia, a bit of a letdown at this point. Yes. I think there's a good amount of letdowns uh, in this uh, overall first run that we had. But one team that's not letting us down, Spain, do you see them as an even bigger favorite for you at this point? Or do you still kind of have your power rankings the same? I still kind of have the power rankings the same. I didn't think that they would be Croatia 3-0, but I do think that Spain, we're going to make it to quarterfinals, semifinals type of thing. Yeah. Okay. I mean, that's pretty solid. I... I do give them a little bit more um, brownie points with this because I think La Mina Mal is really showing up. A 17-year-old. Tiene unos pinches huevotes like una frialdad. Le vale. El juega al fútbol. Yeah, and that's what makes me feel. que tengan 30 años and been at World Cups before. Like, he doesn't care. He's just out there balling out. That's That's the thing. That's the it factor that I think Vinny has as well. It doesn't matter who they're playing against. If they, uh, if they're, if he has a possibility to take you down the line, te va a llevar, we. right? And I think that's a big thing that Spain has. It's it's almost giving like a Barcelona and Real Madrid, like if, like if you're pulling like the best that they have and really playing versus a Real Madrid versus a Barcelona, which is pretty cool. 
So huge props to Spain with that. They play Italy tomorrow then. Yeah. Uh, that's going to be an amazing matchup. Um, will Italy get banned to the shadow realm of, with the Madrisa, similar to Croatia? Um, Italians famously great defenders. So I doubt with that pride they would allow themselves to go down three goals. But it's yeah. going to be a great matchup. Who knows? Maybe we get a surprise too. Oh, a little, no, I see it highly unlikely. A little reality check for Spain after yeah. the 3-0. Maybe. All right. Uh, a team that did disappoint us, uh, folks, England. They beat Serbia 1-0. They got the three points, so we got to we gotta give them that. Uh, but I don't think they convinced anybody. Nobody. Nobody. No, I think England were really almost like pathetic of uh, in a way that they played. It's like you have so much firepower, you're going to sit like 80-plus minutes and yeah, you have the ball and then you concede it for a while, but like had no willingness to go forward and score a second one. Um, so for me, England are really freaking like annoying. Yeah. <laughs> the and way they play. Yeah. The, what's the joke been like soccer terrorists, right? Like they have the best players in the world, especially in that mid. And you just cannot find a way to put players in the right places to be conductive to like good offensive footy, a dominant play. They're not dominating either. No. They barely had 53% possession versus 47. Their expected goal about 0.5, which is crazy. Like they should have been shooting at this keeper nonstop, but they get a goal off of a, a solid cross from Saka, but an amazing header by Jude Bellingham. Yeah. And then that's it. And then that was it. That's all. They nothing wrote. from Foden. Nothing else from Saka. Nothing else from uh, Declan Rice. Wasn't like he was everywhere defensively, but como que no, nada para adelante. And then you put Cole Palmer in, y tampoco. Harry Kane, tampoco nada de él. They completely screwed me on my prize picks, folks. I'm gonna keep plugging it. All the players that have <laughs> screwed me. Harry Kane needed one and a half shots on goal. He got. I think he got none. I'm dead. Hijo de su madre. Yeah, to a very modest Serbia, it's like England, the the team that is probably the favorites at this Euros. They made it to the final last Euros. Uh, they lost to Italy, um, but this final should be theirs. Yep. They should win it. They should take it home 100%. But the way they're playing just doesn't seem like they will. I hope this is like a sleeping, like a sleeping monster that's about to wake up. It needs to be. Uh, last Euros, they had a similar like hate towards them, right? But uh, Southgate was able to get them to the final of the Euros. He has one of the highest uh, goals per game averages of any of the coaches, but still it looks terrible. Yeah, but it's because you have that that firepower. You have the entire you have the the dream team. Any coach would dream to have that. Imagine being a, a an English footy legend, like you should be up next to coach, and you're like, dude, you're wasting the generation. Get us some freaking wins. Make them look good. But he's just not doing it. Serbia tampoco. The Serbia in this game, they were also like, they weren't even pressing. I'm telling you, it's like they were mid. Yeah. Ser this Serbia was mid. Um, England should have destroyed the Serbia 3-0 like we saw Spain against Croatia. At least. Like you have Bukayo Saka. You have Foden. Foden so in form along with Jude Bellingham. Teams, Mexico wishes they had one of those players. <laughs> like, I'm no dead. Manches. <laughs> You're telling me Antuna's not this level? Dude, Antuna. But I just don't understand how you just you score one and then you're like, all right, we're good. It's like, I'm not even going to attack ni nada. Yeah, it was in the 13th. And then after that, they're like, eh. Uh, Istamos were good and then <clears throat> a lot of commentators were like if South Southgate that was his plan because if your team is sitting back as a manager you're on the sideline telling them move up mm -hmm. go up the field press Amunos, I can meter otro y otro but he, he didn't do that it's very like, calm guy right he I mean. seemed like that was okay with him like he was 1-0 Estamos bien I mean, they play Denmark next, do. A, a bit of a stronger team, a good amount stronger team, more collective, I would say, as a unit. So, ojalá Denmark les pone la presión so that we can get the best footy out of England that we're hoping for. Uh, but in all honesty, at that point, is it really like a question of would would we be getting it from Southgate 
the best out of these players or would it be the players just doing it themselves just because they have the quality? I think the players are the ones they're going to take this team. I think Jude Bellingham is going to be the person to take this team, put it on his shoulders and tell that whole team, hey, we got to go for more. He did it against Serbia. He was physically on the field saying, everybody move up. Let's keep going. uh He comes from Real Madrid where they attack relentlessly and Mm -hmm. to come to a Southgate team that's just really passive like it's not gonna fly by him for real and doing whatever he needs to to get the win yeah. himself going up into the box being further up the pitch than a harry kane than your own striker which he does with Real Madrid already he's already way higher up the pitch than rodrigo sometimes and getting a beautiful header in con puros pinches huevos always in the right place uh, uh, big kudos to jude bellingham for just and getting yeah. them the three points at that point. And one other thing I want to re- quickly mention is I can see this England barely scraping by this group stage, and they're not going to get a scare until quarterfi- until the next round. What is the next round? Quarterfinals? Uh, uh, round of 16. Uh, round of 16s, I think. They go to a round of 16s. They get, like, a team que está más cabrón y, no, y les va a faltar porque they didn't have that initial... You know, prep game where you're, estás exigido. Yeah. So I can see that happening with this English team too. Yeah, the Denmark match is probably going to be the closest thing they'll have to that of really being asked of things. Hopefully Denmark can get a goal to really push this yeah. team. Um, but yeah, outside of that, uh, they were not really seeing anything from England. Uh, another team that I saw play better, but also not getting the level of dominance that we think but that they probably should have was France. Yeah. They beat Austria 1-0. Uh, I, they didn't convince a lot of people. I thought they played very well. I think Austria deserves some flowers more than like a Serbia. Austria is a really tough team. They were missing Alava, but th- I think overall the team was tr- like giving it their all. Um, but then they lose Mbappe yeah. to a broken nose on a on a, like a random, what was it, like a long throw in or a, or a corner. Tries to go in and... Sh- Basically, headers a ball and puts his his face straight into the player's shoulder. Yeah, and now that he's probably out for a couple of games, they were saying that he was going to get a, a face mask, Ninja Turtle style. But uh, I don't know if he I'm he'll dead. be he'll be available for next game. But yeah, it's a complete miss for France. But either way, I think this French team should be able to get out of this group. Yes, I give I agree with you in that Austria was a much tougher team than Serbia more collective, more defensively well put. Um, and this French team still has Griezmann, still has, uh, what is it, Theo Hernandez, still has a lot of key players that um, can help them get a win against any team. Yeah, they, they still have the amazing squad outside of him. Freaking, uh, Aturam, uh, Dembele. Like, yeah, freaking uh, center mid, Saudi Arabia. N'Golo Kante. N'Golo Kante got, back. He got man of the match. But yeah. I mean... I mean, oh, this this last match they had Mbappe at the nine, and they put Turam out wide, right? So that was it was a little bit weird to me that he was like the nine when Turam's usually the natural striker, but they're just gonna put in Giroud. Yeah, están igual. Papita. I mean, obviously, yeah, Mbappe could do it all by himself with Giroud, not so much anymore from like a half field line forward type of thing. But hot take. But I, you just switch it up a little bit. I bet you now France does better. Damn. There's a lot of plays there was one specific play that i seen yeah um bobby took it down the left wing yeah through the middle it's like those are the ones that you should be selfless and give it to to your player who's running right in that you know what that's a good shout um like you mentioned in this play sometimes they want to do it themselves i'll go back to the past game england versus serbia there was the play where everyone was calling out that Jude Bellingham's superhero ego is going to lead to the downfall of England because there was a play where he tried to take a player down the line and he had Phil Foden right outside of the box in a corner where Phil Foden, we've seen it so much with England, with uh, with Manchester City, he gets it right outside the box, cuts in, mocos cabron, right? And he didn't give it to him. He broke down line and got a shitty cross up after like doing like a back and forth and a back and forth. And people were like, damn, are is there like internal stuff? Like, does Jude just want to score everything, win it himself? When you have big pieces, the biggest thing is you got to you gotta feed into others, right? Conjunto. But uh, to what your point was, uh, 
we're also seeing Mbappe do that. But you're saying with Giroud, maybe we see less, right? A bit more de poste. Sí, más de poste, más jugar en conjunto, play with your teammates. Um, because they, you could give it to Dembele and he can, he can do it himself. Yeah. So la una buena, he'll score. Griezmann the same. Like, they have quality players. Um, so maybe that less selfishness from uh, Mbappe not being there, maybe that'll be the key for them. I do think it, it'll be more conducive to, um, to Griezmann's play. Yes. Because Mbappe, como que, I, I always feel like he takes away a lot from Griezmann. Uh, but now, when you have a post, it's going to really ask more of Griezmann, and he can play off of Giroud. Mm -hmm. Maybe he'll shine a little bit more. Yes, I have all the faith in Griezmann. He's probably one of the few 10s there's there's left, the natural 10s can, can, that can be creative like that. Yes, yeah, he's 33. Yeah, LAFC a la, sooner a la MLS. <laughs> uh, the other thing I wanted to call out, we both had Mbappe as our as our Real. golden boot, and it's very much unlikely uh, that he would win it if he misses the next two matches. And I think one of us said we were, we had Harry Kane as second place. I s you said Harry Kane, and then I said Lukaku out of like our old guys Dude. that we would call. If you guys have watched the last episode, <laughs> we were joking, and I said, "What if Lukaku? You know what? What if he does?" And then uh, Cesar's like, "You know what? I'll match you. Harry Kane will I'll win us. it." So those are our backups. But I mean, if it's not Mbappe out of the youngins, who, who can who can win? Damn, Golden probably Lamine Mal. I can see. I can see. You know, did he score? No, he, he didn't <laughs> score. But I bet you he will score. Arda Guler was also another shout. But, I don't but know for how, Golden Boot, though, I don't know how top far, goal scorer. Uh, that's what I'm saying. I don't know how far Turkey will go into the tournament. Sheesh. But uh, I mean, I don't know if anybody has two goals in in the in the tournament so far. Do we have anything like that? Musiala today. Oh, okay. He's played, yeah. So Musiala, Musiala today, but out. everyone else has one. I can see Morata getting up there numbers-wise. Possibly, yeah. He's going to get the opportunities. It's going to be whether he puts them away. Um, Cody Hakpo with Netherlands might be a, a underrated shout. Um, Jude Bellingham, in all honesty. Yeah. I can see him getting the one goal a game. I can see And that then too. you're at the end of it, and you're like, whoa, you have seven goals. And yeah. you're at the top of the thing. But, um, yeah, maybe maybe uh, Harry Kane or Lukaku will come through for us. Maybe, if Lukaku's not defending. If he's not defending uh, the other team's, the other goal, team's goal, yeah. I'm dead. Um, no, yeah, but uh, going back to Mbappe, he has to wear a mask for a couple of uh, matches, apparently. He's going to be out for a couple of matches, then has to wear a mask. This is one of those things where I could see it becoming, like, uh, a meme where they're like, damn, you remember... Prime Mbappe with a mask. Yeah. People are gonna be like, "Damn, we don't want to see Mbappe with a mask." Dang. What if he wears like a Batman one? That'd be cool. Or the t Ninja Turtle. He should just one. embrace the Ninja Turtle one, dude. Yeah, for real, huh? Yeah. Somebody, I forgot who made the joke. Uh, I think someone, uh, some French teammate of Mbappe, they were like, uh, "I don't look like a Ninja Turtle" because they mistaken mistook him for for Mbappe. And he actually said it on the press, <laughs> and I was like, "What the fuck?" I'm dead. I'm pretty sure they embrace it internally. It'll be cool. For real, that would be pretty cool. Um, yeah, I I don't think it'll affect his game at all. Maybe a header or two, but everything's with the feet, right? Barely so he, he's, headers too. he's gonna come up. I as long as he can breathe fine, I think he'll come back full strength. Um, but dude, his nose was freaking wild. That yeah. thing was off to the side. Yeah. It was, and Warm. and he was gushing blood. Pues que le vaya bien en su recuperación. Hopefully he recovers quickly in Mbappé. Um, one of the, uh, the biggest one of all, in my opinion, the biggest blunder of them all, slip up, we mentioned a little bit with Lukaku, but Belgium, they lost 1-0 to Slovakia. It was the biggest gap between teams for a Euros victory in the history of the Euros. Uh, the lower ranked team here, 48, Slovakia beating third ranked Belgium. As wild. It speaks more to Belgium being third than Slovakia being 48th. Yeah, it's, um, a lot of these lower ranked teams above 25, they're doing amazing. Was Who is it that beat, um, that beat Ukraine? Romania? Yeah, Romania beat Ukraine 3 to 0, yes. and Romania's 46. Ukraine was like 22nd. So uh, once you get into the 20s and up, it's all a blur. Especially in, uh, in Europe. Yeah. In Europe, the nations are pretty similar in uh in strength yeah exactly but we got a goal from the boy Schranz in the seventh minute 
from Slavia Prague. Of course, I had my money on him the whole time. Uh huh. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then uh, what? Belgium got what? Two goals taken away. Yeah. So yeah, Belgium got two goals made by Lukaku. Both of them. Yeah. I would have been. I would have been. My agenda would have been there if they would have just given me my goals. No, but that was the biggest blunder. I have uh, Belgium. I had them as one of the biggest disappointments this whole tournament, and so far, my agenda is playing out true. So so far, not bad. Uh, they do still have to play Romania because they don't know mother Ukraine, and then they got to play Ukraine. At Which that point. both of those Ukraine was doing well leading up. I think they just had a bad game, but either way, both of those teams are going to be tough to beat for yeah. Belgium. Especially if they couldn't even beat Slovakia. If you can't put them away, if Kevin De Bruyne just doesn't wake up, swear. If like, yeah, just the the overall play of them. I when I looked at the lineup, it looked good on paper. Yes, Doku on one side at a really top level of City. Trossard on the other side, really top level with Arsenal. Trossard had one of the worst games I've seen. It looked horrible, and I'm the biggest Trossard stand. When it comes to Arsenal, I was always like, Metenlo, in vez de Kai Havertz, in vez de Martinelli. He took Martinelli's spot. Like, uh, all these things. But no, it, he had a very off game. Hopefully he comes back from it because they're going to need him. Uh, but Doku had a terrible mistake on the goal. And then after that, he just couldn't get by his, his defender. I think it's more of a mental thing for Belgium because it's been so many... Euros, World Cups. I think it's been like two or three World Cups that we've been waiting on this Belgium team to wake up. That by this point, si no pudieron, pues ya no van a poder. Yeah. It's like, I mean, what else can we expect? They should not be ranked third whatsoever. That's crazy. It's crazy. They should be like, <laughs> they should be fighting to stay in the top 10. They should. I don't think they should even be top 10, like Damn. realistically. I mean, Mexico is uh, like right 14th. out of the 10. I know. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. It's like, <laughs> Uh, That's how I gauge things, folks. <laughs> if you're listening, uh, are you as booty as Mexico? No, well, then maybe 11, 12. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dead. Uh, but yeah, I mean, this De Bruyne is a freaking ghost. If it's not City with everybody else recuperando varones para él, so he shines, no hace nada. I, mean, I, don't, I don't think he had a terrible game, pero como que no se impone right. that, that, that De bruyne into the game. Like, Doku should not have to be trying to go down the line by himself. Neither should Trossard. They should be... Do, Doku plays with them in, in City. Feed into him, and then De Bruyne is going to use that fucking radar and put it right in front of you. A one-two, right? Or just make some movements around De Bruyne and let him cook with the ball. But como que no le llegan los balones. No, he's not in coordination with where the players are going to be. He doesn't have pep. Behind him, telling everyone exactly where to be, yeah, um, and it's just not working out. And he also is getting really exposed for his age, in my opinion. He's looking very slow, very heavy. Yes, when they need him to help out a little bit more. Yes, which he shouldn't. A player, a ten like that, sometimes you don't need them. You're not supposed to have them help you out. Right. Yes. Um, and I agree with you. I agree with everything you said. And I think even adding Trossard in there, like Arteta and Pep, aren't that much different of playing styles yeah. and coaches. Like all these three should be in sync, almost just feeding each other, knowing when they're gonna where and, and where they're gonna be, how to touch. And like you said, the Bruyne está pasado. He should be better fit, in my opinion. But like I said, in City, you, he's he has Rodri there recuperando balones para mm -hmm. él. Or he has uh, Kovacic next to him, you know. So he has all these other quality players that maybe in Belgium they're not there yet. So he has to do that extra work. He le cuesta. Yeah, I think a big piece to it is the back line is not the same back line. And I never even thought it was that great of a back line back in the day uh, with Vertonghen uh -huh. and those folks. I think that was a big, a big blunder piece for and Belgium. Axel Witzel was there too. Axel when Witzel was when he was already old, but now he's still old and still there and on the bench. But like. You're you're the number three, the number three ranked team in the world, and your starting center back is Walt Fias, who's at Leicester, just coming back up to the Premier League. Yep, like that. I don't think that's. I don't love that. The other one is Zeba Devast, twenty year old from Anderlecht. Anderlecht is not a powerhouse in Europe. They're a good, a powerhouse in Belgium. Yeah, but not an amazing team. Like I, I just think th that defense seems to be trying to maybe transition. 
I, and you're using uh, Carrasco as a, as an outside back. That dude's an attacker. Yes. With the, we know him at Atletico Madrid. He I attacks. I was so confused why they had him back there. I was like, okay, maybe they're doing three in the yeah. back, right? And he's not. No, but he was. Yeah. The outside back. And Castan- I, I like Castagna on the other side at yeah. Fulham. I think, Fulham he's, yeah. I think he's a baller. But he was also just at Leicester <laughs> in the second division. Come on. Like that defense is needs to be redone. Because it's completely a night and day from the names on paper, Lukaku, De Bruyne, Trossard, Doku, with that back line. Yes. And, and then you also add on that you don't have, um, uh, what's his name? Hazard? No, the goalkeeper. Oh, yeah, you don't have Courtois. You, you don't have Courtois. That, that's another addition to Why him. isn't he there? He's injured again, I think. Again? He played the final. He did. But I don't know why. I think he's injured. He got injured after? Yeah, I think oh, he got God. injured after. I mean, the keeper's not the problem. Starter at Wolfsburg, but solid. I, I know it's not right? the problem, but imagine having a It would help like out a lot. But that I think the biggest problem is that back line. Yes. If you have a strong back line, you can really help De Bruyne not have to do anything, not have to come back and help, not get exposed like that, which he's still not doing, but like he just doesn't need to if you have a very good back line. And I think it would really help them attack a lot better. I think this is a team that can pull it back together uh, in their next matches. I don't think they can. But Romania is going to be tough if they if they yeah. play anything like they did versus the Ukraine. That's going to be a, a tough matchup. Yeah, and then you look at the Slo- Slovenia uh, starting 11, Slovakia starting 11. Like I, I only recognize Dubravka. All these other guys don't really know who they are. <laughs> uh, their left back is from uh, Feyenoord, I know that. Yeah, Hanko. Hanko. He shut down Doku. And I was like, damn. But I want. Santi's teammate. Three Some, points is three points against Belgium. Exactly. It is. Three points is three points. A lot of tough matchups. Uh, we're starting to move into the second match week. Uh, right now we have Germany, the only team with six points. because They're one of the few that have had their second game. Uh, but Germany is looking strong. Spain at the top of Group B. England at the top of Group C with some questions. Netherlands at the top of Group D. Looking, we didn't even talk about them. Yeah, they're not. They're not looking too great, but they did be. Uh, they beat Poland, right? Which uh, Poland was a lot of people's picks for, like dark a horse. not a dark horse because they're not going to make it out of that group, yeah. but like a, a team that could look good. Romania surprising us in Group E. Turkey at the top of Group F above Portugal. Who Portugal got a win? It's just goal differential, honestly, at that point. But that they go Turkey Georgia game was wild. Yeah, but they go head to head now with Turkey versus Portugal. Maybe we could talk a little bit about that. That, that I mean, that group, in my opinion, has been the most fun to watch. Yeah, they're like all kind of even. Yes, and Portugal is kind of playing at the the level they should be playing better. Yes, uh, but I'm excited to see what they do against each other. Now we got Portugal versus uh, versus Turkey coming up. Uh, but that Turkey versus Georgia game was not what anyone expected. Dude, that was so much fun. Every ball they were going to was 50-50. Con todo madrazos. Puro madrazos, wey. Puro madrazos, codazos, todo lo que se nombra todo. You know what it really shows that había madrazos, wey? I looked up stats and I made an educated decision, folks. I make educated decisions for my bets. Arda Guler hasn't had more than one tackle in freaking his career, I think. Ni en sus sueños. And I put a less on two tackles. There were so many tackles in this match, he got three. And he came off early. <laughs> he did. He did. And I was like, what the f-? Pero había tantos madrazos que hasta en the, in, in the stands había madrazos no, también. <laughs> like, both of these teams, both fans on the field and off the field, they were going at it. They were at the they they met like at a corner, yeah, huh? They, and they were like corner. throwing shit at each other. <laughs> and it was pouring rain. They're like, I don't care if I descalza sí, la casa. Uh, but it was a really fun match. The last minute, the third goal for Turkey came off of a corner, like in the ninety second minute. Um and empty where, net where the Georgian goalkeeper was up trying mm-hmm. to score and they almost scored. They had a double save from the Turkey goalkeeper. Rebote came out, and then that's where Turkey a las got carreras. Vámonos a correr, cabrones. And that's where they got the 3-1. Yeah. But electric, electric match. I Epic was, scenes, especially so ending the match like that. Yes. Like it, everyone was screaming at the end of the match, just passion, yeah. uh, desperation from the Georgian squad, sadness from them. 
uh, Kvaric Skelly getting outplayed by a lot of his other teammates. Yes. Right. They they uh, the goal scorer was Mikau Tadze from Mets. Yeah, and there was that play, uh, El de Levante, <laughs> 24-year-old Georgie. He had a beautiful one-on-one against uh, one of the, the outside backs. And I thought, like, una pinche bicicleta parecía prime Ronaldinho y se la dio al, uh, the one who scored it, Mitsadutse. Mm-hmm. I th- that play was fucking beautiful. I was like, holy shit, Georgia be cooking. I'm telling you, the, there were a bunch of memes on Twitter that people were like... Uh, uh, yo pensando que iba a ser un juego molero, and then and they're like, e Georgia versus Turkey, and it was like highlights of France versus Brazil yeah, in the it World was, Cup. It was exactly like that. It was Bro, crazy. they showed up. They yeah. they were like, let's put on a show, man. Bro, to have 19 year old Arda Guler didn't get a single. I want to shout this out. Arda Guler did not have a single minute in Champions League with Real Madrid. He was along for the ride as a project. Yes. Right? That is the bottom of the bench that Real Madrid and this dude was cooking at the Euros so much so that he scored an amazing a banger goal probably going to go for go up for one of the best goals of the tournament I swear golazo le pegó seco seco y fue un riflazo but it was curving in it's like the technique was like exquisite as soon as it left his boot I was like este es un pinche golazo que t- well, right when he put it I was like ooh se perfiló I didn't ask way. I was like, ah, Santa Madre. I was like, like yeah, vayan sacándola, yeah. Portero, eh, ni te tires, <laughs> ni, te ni pa' la foto. <laughs> pa' qué, mi don? No vas a llegar. No vas a llegar. Uh, but yeah, it was beautiful by Arda Gulera. I'm excited to keep seeing him this Euros. Somebody else I also wanted to shout out from that Turkey squad is Kadioglu, who was just relentless down, down that left It's a winger, side. right? Yeah, he's a left back. Yeah. But he looked like a winger because he was just going up and down that left side. I was like, no, man, just cuantos pulmones tiene este way. 24-year-old from Fenerbahce had an amazing game. Not for long at Fenerbahce. Damn, not with Mourinho. Mourinho's probably going to sell him because I'm an us. Yeah, oh, dude, yeah, if Mourinho, if Mourinho gets to keep him, he's going to cook with him. Yes. And then he's going to flip him for like 100 times the money. Like, yeah. No, but yeah, this dude uh, is quality. Both sides had an amazing quality. I'm really excited for this turkey. They were my dark horse pick. I'm yeah. cooking with this agenda, folks. Let's go. I just wanted to say that. But they get after a disappointing Euros last time yeah. around. This time they started off with the banks. They're so looking far. strong. It looks like they have good options off the bench and really good youth players. Um, they have Portugal up next, the biggest test of them all. They need to survive that and then try to get their points from Chechia and Czech Republic, and they'll be good to go. At least it's a los uh, playoffs. Yeah, um, we are going to hold off a little bit on talking about Copa America just because we've covered it everywhere, folks. Um, just to shout out our content, we just did an episode, uh, a full-length episode where we talked about our predictions front to back of uh, Copa America uh, where we gave our predictions of the two from each group that will make it out to the knockout rounds and then uh, from there all the way to the final and who's going to be champion. Go and check that out on YouTube uh, and on Goals just for uh, video content mainly. Uh, but, yeah, take a look. See who I think is going to win it all. See who Cesar thinks is going to win it all. How far does Mexico make it? And then on that same note, we also made a video on that is exclusively on Goals TV where we're just going over Mexico at the Copa America. How far do we think we'll make it? And the score lines for each match against uh, Jamaica, against Venezuela, against Ecuador. And then knockout rounds, do they make do they make it on to knockout rounds? It's the big question. So go check it out. It's going to be a goodie. Uh, but let's move on to some top news, Cesar. I have, a, I have a couple of notes to bring up. Uh, one of the biggest things, uh, Chiquito Sanchez, a big name in Liga Mekis right now, probably one of the, the hottest players out there, uh, best talents under, I mean, he's already like 24, uh, under yeah. 25-ish. Um, hot commodity. Everyone wants to sign him. We all want him to go to Europe. The rumor was Europe, but apparently now Jesus Martinez and Pachuca have declined offers from Europe. The only ones left are an America offer. And Which verbally they, they've agreed to it, right? Apparently Pachuca verbally agreed to it, but they now have said that they are putting it onto the player for the final decision. And then the other option is for him to stay internal to Pachuca and to go to Real Oviedo owned by Pachuca if they go up to first division in Spain. 
Damn. What are your thoughts on it? I think they fucked over Chiquito Sanchez once again. Another player <laughs> getting screwed <laughs> over. Yeah, it's good if and only if um, Real Oviedo moved to that first division, if they're able to get promoted. So far, they played that first leg at Real Oviedo, and they're up 1-0. So now they have to go to Espanol. They got to go to Barcelona and finish off the task. Did you watch the the game? I watched the first half. They yes. scored. They scored the goal and they panned to Jesus Martinez is in the in the crowd. Oh, he was there. Yeah, like typical silver hair motherfucker, right? And he was he. You could see him go, "No mames!" When they scored, he was Let's like go. hell excited. And then they scored again, but les quitaron el gol. Uh, uh, I think it was a bear, like a hair off sides. And again, they panned him, and some of the fans got into his section, and they were like, he was having the time of his life. He was like yeah, hugging yeah, them yeah. all. He's like, "Nos vamos a la primera, <laughs> cabrones!" And then they pulled it back. <laughs> Let's go! But no, uh, good times having Mexicans in uh, in Spanish footy. Yeah, it is now. Just take more Mexicans. If yeah, like I said, if he goes to America, pues ya va listo, güey. Ahí te vas a quedar going to be in Liga MX lifer because. If Pachuca didn't let you go, I'm pretty sure America is not going to let you go. Yeah, the, this is what I don't, I don't understand. Don't they think like a step or two ahead? Like, why would America or Monterrey or Tigres or Cruz Azul that pays 7 to $11 million for some of these players, why would they send you to Europe when the European teams just didn't want to pay 7 to $11 million for you? Yes. You're not going to get any younger. You're probably not going to get any better. You're already at a really good peak for Liga Mekis. America is not going to get fifteen million for Chiquito Sanchez in a year or two years, just like they didn't get the same for Kevin Alvarez, and now he's worth half. Yes, and pobre Kevin Alvarez is not going to Europe anytime soon. Chiquito, if you go to America, you're not going to go to Europe anytime soon. Listen to y us. Yeah, te quedas. Yeah, te vas a quedar. So I think the best scenario here for Chiquito is for Real Oviedo to get promoted, so he can go over there and try his luck there. Um, but how sad is that? Like he supposedly had a Sevilla offer. Mm-hmm. And then a Feyenoord offer, and he also had Toulouse offer. That's my last reason. Oh, last time, yeah, last uh, winter, yes. But like, are they offering less than four million? Because that mean like Chiquito's probably four to five. No, I, I'll give you that. But like, they're valuing him at eleven to fourteen, and they're not getting that. But then America is apparently the closest one to getting to ten to eleven, which at that point is just like. Okay, I, I get it why a European team would want to pay 11. You could buy five freaking South American ballers. Yeah. And you, you're going to flip four of them for way more. Yeah. But, like, it's just a bit disheartening because it's just like... Uh, Jesus Martinez has come out in an interview and said that in the past they've taken less money for players to give them their dream of going to Europe. He said up to 30% less that they've done that. And it's just like, okay, then... What's your 30%? Like, if you're putting them at 11, 30% of that is like 8 million. I think it comes down at this point. I understand Jesus Martinez. He's one of the only ones that I, I respect because of what he's doing with Real Oviedo. He's trying to build something over there and kind of make a funnel for Mexican players. So, at this is point, he? that fool that fool had one player, uh, he had uh, the, a random left back, the Aceves, on yes, the bench. He did. But now he's super close to moving them up to first division. Yeah. Where Real Oviedo wasn't a couple of years ago. So that's why I give him that. Maybe it's a project. Maybe we'll, we won't see Mexicans until they're in first division and like a couple of years in. So I, I'm in Pachuca. If your contract is up and you're getting plenty of minutes like these young kids with 200 plus uh, jerseys in the, in the back, just go to Europe. Go on a free and go try yourself like that kid uh, Elche. Uh, go to Jesus Hernandez Jesus from Hernandez Querétaro, from yeah, Perna- ex- exactly, just like him, or just go to the Dutch league and go try yourself out over there. Like, tienes con que, no más que lo que te está parando is that big price tag. Yeah, but that's the thing. There needs to be th- there's a big price tag because tampoco son pendejos los de la Liga de el México. Negocios, negocios, America is gonna talk. pay eleven. Yes. Monterrey will pay 15. Yes. Tigres will pay somewhere in between that. Cruz Azul is paying there as well. Chivas will come in and play, pay so sporadically. It would be pretty stupid for a Maori to look at his best player in Chivas that's valued at, like, if you weren't Mexican, if you weren't in Mexico, it would be valued at 3 to 5. But Monterrey will pay 9. Why would you put him at 5? 
because then you're going to go and need to replace him. Yeah. It's lo mismo. We're just in a hole, and I feel like at this point, the only way is for the players to go early. Yeah, it's a really toxic market. Players have to go either early or do what Rodrigo Huescas did. Rodrigo Huescas apparently hasn't renewed with Cruz Azul. Exactly, yes. Because at a certain point... At a certain point, I think it's that players feel like this gratitude for the team that they need to repay them with the transfer fee that they get. But if they're not getting you a reasonable offer, like to Europe, not letting you go, like, ¿qué deuda les tienes? Like, sí. I understand they probably brought you in on the cantera. And probably you didn't have anything. Your family doesn't have anything. Yeah. Like, vienes de literally nada. I understand why you, why you will take that big paycheck at America at... Uh, Monterrey, Tigres, uh, all these. Others. But that's where it might become like an agent thing. Like if the agents need to be fully transparent with this team, like, hey, this kid wants to go to Europe. The market to Europe is three to five million for a Mexican player. Let's not start talking seven to eleven. If that's right now, sell them right now. Versus in three years when you're trying to get them for twice the price, like that's. That doesn't make any sense anymore. They're not going to want a 24-year-old. They're going to want a 17, 18, 19-year-old at 3 to 4 million, not a 25-year-old at 11. Yeah. And, yeah, it's... Toxicos. Just, it's, y, it's toxico. It's, a, it's its own market in Mexico. It's, it's un desmadre, yes. and it's completely different than any other league out there. And it's fueled by us watching yeah, and watching, watching TUDN. Getting the ads on TUDN, yeah. Yes, uh, the Cielito Lindos, Vincengas. For real, and it's uh, TV I mean, Azteca talking more about jokes than about the the game. It's having Osvaldo Sanchez, bro. Get the fuck out of here, bro. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's what entertains us. Mexico is the biggest market in the Mexican market is one of the biggest markets in the U.S. So they know the they know the product, they know who they're pitching to, they know the end user. Um, but <laughs> yeah, it, it all of that that we just explained is is what leads to overpriced. Yes. Right, overpriced, the craziest market of all time that we've seen in Mexico. Uh, pero sí, el chiquito, ojalá, Real Oviedo goes up so they can go just basically internally, play first division footy, maybe bring Rafa Marquez over so they can cook, give some Mexicans the opportunity. I still think my big thing with Jesus Martinez, take take more Mexicans then. Put them in the canteras. 17-year-olds, yeah. 16-year-olds. Especially if the... No, maybe he younger. maybe he is waiting for uh, them to get first division, but because uh, then at that point he can funnel very good players to his first division Spain team and sell them for more than if they were first division Mexico, and they're already going to have their paperwork. They're going to have they're not going to be after two years you get your passport. You don't take up a spot as a as an extranjero, uh, so maybe that'll be a good solution. To uh, yeah, and this he also problem. has to he has a duty to look out for Real Oviedo and their fan base porque si no te van la madre también. Do you so see the videos? Just, it's just a lot in this entorno. You see the videos? How much they love him? Uh, they there was like an street interviews with a bunch of fans, and they were all like, th he asked, "What do you think of uh, Jesus Martinez and Grupo Pachuca when they came into the institution?" They're like, "Oh, it's the best thing ever." The town was like in shambles and he brought this team gave us life through the team now the the town is like really excited we're all around the team and it's all thanks to like mexican ownership coming through and i was like damn yeah. that's the type of uh people we like to to put a good name out yeah there for us. these people televisa why doesn't televisa have teams I swear santiago años a vete a Yes, yeah, carga. Yes, carga. Vete, manda Santiago Baños allá. Get out of Mexico. Vete a la Go worry about things in other places. Yeah, those are. Cause you know what I think it is? Low key, hot take. Because those are the big boys. Jeez. Ascarga has to stay in su pocket, no? In su, in su mundo. Que él ha creado. Sí. He sí. can't go. He can't go to Spain. Y que le tope con un pinche. Florentino no, Perez, eh? No, bro. I, I can see that happening. Que le toque on la puerta or put him in his place? Hey, no, I can see that. Damn. That's lucky wild. Don't kill me in the comments, folks. <laughs> 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 All right, folks. Enough of uh, complaining about Liga Mekis, like our usual segments. Uh, one person that's not complaining about Liga Mekis, Jakumukis, the new superstar player from Cruz Azul that came over from Atlanta United after being very, very um, upset, distressed, 
uh, overall infuriated with the situation at Atlanta where they just were not winning. So much so to the point where they fired Gonzalo Pineda. Uh, but he came over for about $10 million to Cruz Azul, which I think is a great signing because Toro was injured. Angel Sepulveda has been out and like not doing great. It's been sucking. Uh, but he came on. He's had amazing things to say about Mexico, about the people in his first couple of weeks there. But today he had a statement that he is very happy being in Mexico because... When he was in MLS, he had a feeling like losing was an okay thing in MLS, which is it is not in Mexico. In Mexico, wow. they demand you win. Wow, let's go. Big shots fired. I think the level here is higher. The bad thing in MLS, it's okay to lose some games, and I hate it. Direct quote. No, yeah, he's, he did it in English. Todavía no está listo con su Spanish todavía. But uh, for him to come out, those are, um, as people are saying, fighting words on Twitter. Yeah, I mean, he must have been really upset with MLS, with Atlanta, with Gonzalo Pineda for him to, a few weeks in, just come out and say, que chinguen a su madre allá, they just, they don't care if they win or lose. And over here in Mexico, I can already tell that aquí se va a exigir. Um, says a lot about Liga MX, which is, es torneo corto, so you can say every match counts, yeah. and fans will go up to the installations will go up to your front door where you train and demand answers. Demand, uh, you give them answers as to why you're losing, why you're not performing well, like what's going on. And, and I can see it in, in Atlanta or in the U.S. in general, nobody's going to do that. Nobody's man. doing that. Our earthquakes are at the worst they've been in forever. And nobody's... I don't even want to get near that stadium. <laughs> nobody's that. even... Uh, Nobody's uh, asking questions to anybody's to, front to, door. Yeah, to John Fish, nobody. Nadie. Yo, the Ultras did not show up to the last match, though. Shout I mean, out to the Ultras. Shout out to the Ultras, yeah. Show you guys your respect, the flowers. I see what y'all are doing and demand answers. But in a different realm, these are everyday fans. Yes. Right? Versus everyday fans are not going up to John Fisher's door or to like any of the ownership of any of the teams here, to the coaches and, and demanding answers. In Mexico, you... Every practice, you can see fans outside upset about something, especially yes. if their team's lost. Um, They'll stop your car from moving until you roll down the window and, and talk to them. Yeah. Like, it can get, it, it can be a really good thing and a really bad thing. It can get bad. Um, so, it's just, there's a different level of passion in Mexico than there is in the U.S. Yeah, and uh, the other thing I wanted to uh, just bring up, like, it's interesting, maybe if we break down a little bit of what he's seeing, like... It, Anselmi, uh, he's coming to a Cruz Azul that just lost the final. Yes. So it's a team that wins. He's coming to Anselmi, who just turned this whole damn team around, is trying to turn the whole institution around into a winning organization. Um, wins everywhere he goes, in the Benet del Valle, every single team. So his first couple of sessions must have been amazing and must have had like a like a really good first impression off of the coach and then off of the the players that had amazing seasons around him. Yeah. To just be like, all right, this team that I got to is no fucking joke. Yeah. They are good. Um, and a lot of people are calling out, it's about to get good in League's Cup. Oh, yeah. He's he's going to want to tear MLS teams up. He's going to want to make a statement. To. Yes. If not, like what? He's going to get called out in interviews. He's going to get called out on social media. People are going to be like, no, que muy papita. You're, you have the same results against them like when you were in season there, which is mid. Right. Which I think he's he's a really good addition, like fits right into that Cruz Azul that just uh, lost the final against America. Like they needed a striker, and if he can turn it on, he'll probably score lots of goals with them. They really needed it because Angel Sepulveda was there at the end of the season. They were throwing in Antuna for the what, the first leg yes. of America, which is like crazy to be just throwing things around the first match of a final. It, but if you had a striker like him, huge, yeah. big goal scorer from europe like this is almost this can be like a i wouldn't say a guignac level signing Dude, yeah but i would say maybe like a like a like a dineno level signing right like an institutional like, forward yes and kind of like a um what's brandon vasquez yeah who came from the mls it's like they're coming from the mls yes but it's also the same built also the almost like the same function because both teams needed a natural nine yeah to score all their goals so same thing here. We alluded, we uh, gave the flowers to Cruz Azul when they were scoring in bunches. We didn't know how, but they were scoring. They were attacking, um, and Antuna was getting their job done. 
for most of the season. Now in the off season, not in the in the playoffs when they played an America who was good defensively. Now they needed that natural striker. They, they need that just, little extra. They couldn't just put Antuna there. Antuna yeah. was a bandit to get you to that point. But once you get to the finals, everybody needs to be at a hundred percent and playing their natural positions. Yeah, they Loki did get exposed a bit for having a couple of holes like yes. a striker, and they filled it this off season with him. Apparently, they want Jorge Sanchez. Apparently, they want uh, Jorge maybe Sanchez like, to replace Wescas once he leaves. I mean, he better. Goddamn! Jesus. If Wescas is Jorge Sanchez is backup because he didn't get out, I'm swinging at somebody like Yani La Chinga, no mames. Um, but yeah, th- I think he fits like a glove to Cruz Azul. Ten million, goddamn, the Yankees teams. Where's yeah, all this money coming a from? Pretty penny. That's crazy. Uh, but it's dope that these players are coming into Liga Mekis and giving uh, a lot of flowers, a lot of praise to the institutions uh, because we're seeing more and more of these extranjeros coming in. Oliver Torres apparently uh, is coming to Monterrey now. Oliver Torres starting center mid for, for Sevilla. Okay, yeah, um, from Spanish team. I don't think he's the solution that Monterrey needed. He's not a very... Uh, like uh, he's kind of box to box, but he's not that like uh, that overpowering. Who's figure. he coming in for? Like they got Romo, they got uh, they got Romo, they got Canales, they got Jordi Cortizo, they got uh, they got Maxi you guys, Mesa. You guys are they getting got, a Monterrey player, uh, Omar Govea. Omar Govea. So that's technically his spot, yes. but like my dude's not coming for the bench. <laughs> so like you're, you're gonna squeeze somebody who is just a starter, who I think Monterrey has pure like starter level quality players Swear. put them putting them back but i would have thought they they could have gotten somebody a bit more uh like with more dynamic characteristics i don't i guess my big point is i don't think oliver torres is what monterrey needs yeah to win a championship now i don't even know what they need they got so many pieces i'm just like Whoa. i think canales is gonna cook this next year i think he's gonna he was like third fourth top goal scorers like i think i had uh-huh. He made his way up, oh, <laughs> but like, but I think he's gonna start cooking the make and MLS in League's Cup. But I, I didn't see that. You need Brandon Nebraska's at his best level. Maybe another more attacking minded, mass mid that tras hacia adelante. But I don't think Oliver Torres is that guy. But shut me up. Maybe he'll to- he'll torch the whole damn league. Maybe he will. Who knows? All right, folks. Well, that's what I had for top news as well. Uh, we'll get right into the games to watch. Cesar, and we'll call it a day. Let's a chingarle. It. Chingarle. All right, Cesar, games to watch. Give me some. We got Mexico against Jamaica this Saturday. Can Mexico start this Copa America with three points and set themselves up for success? All right, I got Croatia versus Italy on Monday. Uh, I think that's a big game to call out. Croatia has to win at that point because they only have one point right now so that they can get either into second or third place and try to get into some knockout rounds. In Group F, we got Turkey against Portugal. Both won their first match. Um, so this match is going to be really important. It's going to define who takes first place. It should be with a lot of goals and a lot of fireworks. And can this Portugal pick it up? Um, they were a bit underwhelming when they played Chechia. So we expect more from Portugal, and this is the game to do it. I got Netherlands versus France. Uh, the big question will be, how can this Fran- how, how will this France look without Kylian Mbappe? out for a couple of games with that broken nose. Um, they have to figure out a way to do it. I think they can plug and play Giroud in and move, keep Turam out wide. I think this is going to be very good for Griezmann's play. They're going to ask a lot of them. Maybe we'll see some bigger numbers from them. Staying in that same group, we got Georgia against Chechia. I think both of these teams deserve more in their first game. So they're going to come out to this game with everything going, trying to get those three points to go into that last game with some hope and trying to make it to the next round. And lastly, I got the U.S. men's national team versus Bolivia. It's time for Burhalter and co. to show up. They have the talent to beat uh, Bolivia easily to destroy them at that. Uh, but Bolivia has a really good opportunity here to make a name for themselves. They're doing terrible in qualifiers, but uh, they can show up for Conmebol. Cool. Let's get it, sister. Bring us on home. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode and at Damian's couch living room. Shout out to Damian for letting us record here. And stay tuned to all the meetups, all the live streams we're going to do, the tailgates. um, And hopefully you guys can catch any of those. It would be really fun to to interact with you guys. And also on the Discord, we're going to be popping in there, uh, talking about every, any and all footy this summer. Um, And thank you guys for tuning in. Yeah, we'll talk soon, folks. Peace. Peace.